All right. I think last video for today, I promise, um, I posted about this book a few weeks ago. I think it was just pictures, though. It was, um, so it's ever ancient, ever new, while younger generations are embracing traditional Catholicism. So when I first got it, I thought, well, why, why would anybody buy this book? Like, I figure, you know, if you're already a traditionalist, if you're already in the thick of traditionalism, then this book will just kind of just support your convictions right i don't think this something like this will convert you know a, a liberal catholic to becoming traditional catholic i don't even think it'll it'll help a, a conservative catholic become a traditional catholic i think you'd buy this book because you're trying to make sense of you know why you're a traditionalist now as, as a young person you're so you're not pining for some lost era uh, of days gone by you're not you're not um what do they say it, it's nostalgic right from from your childhood right um so it has stories from young catholics some of them i've i recognize the name some of them i don't so the first one uh was um was the guy that threw the pacamama statue in rome uh, at the vatican into the tiber river <laughs> so it, it shows his conversion story to traditionalism, right? So I don't know if that's proper term to say conversion story. So he's Catholic. He just converted to or switched over to traditionalism. So this time around, um, I read the section um, by Stephanie Gordon, who is um, the wife of uh, Timothy Gordon. Um, if you know who he is, right? Um, what is what is his channel? He has a channel, Rules for Retrogades is his book. Um Anyway, so he's an author. Um, he was a former teacher, Catholic school teacher here in Southern California. I don't know where. I don't know where he went to Mass. I, I'd never really heard of him before, uh, maybe two, year, two years ago. Um, so anyway, he moved, I guess, to Texas or some other state because, you know, he lost his job here. And now he's teaching, you know, philosophy online, um, all sorts of things. So go check him out, Tim Gordon. Uh, rules for retrogrades or I don't know if that's the name of his channel but certainly that's one of his books from tan books so anyway this this chapter is cool I mean I like it because it basically talks about you know some people are born into traditionalism and others kind of find it like I found myself you know I was I was raised Catholic you know with the practices but not the understanding I became an atheist and came back to the church eventually and um did apologetics for quite some time and discovered what the latin mass was about thought it was weird and went to the society of saint pius x and it took a while and then you know once i got into it um started promoting it started bringing a lot of young people to the latin mass some a lot of them still go to the latin mass some of them have joined the priesthood some of them have done other things uh they got married i think i said that already but um and they still go to latin mass so um, I think the the cool thing about this story was that, um, you know, she didn't shy away from what some Catholics might say is sort of a scandalous uh, background, I guess you can say. And I think we need to really get away from that kind of stigma, that cultural stigma that was probably pre-Vatican II also, and probably still exists today, even in the Novus Ordo, where you have a lot of this stigma of maybe judging people from where they came from, you know, they come from broken families, you know, parents have divorced and all this other stuff. And, you know, we need to take, you know, responsibility kind of away from the individual that we're talking to, right? Because you don't, he, they didn't, they didn't choose the life that they grew up in. Uh, they might choose their own personal moral story. Um, but you can't fault them for the, 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 the makeup of their families where they come from, right? So, um, you know, the main thing that I thought was uh, was interesting here uh, was, you know, how I, I thought the story of, of her finding her 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 future husband was was pretty was pretty cool was pretty interesting. Uh, but I think towards the end is where I thought was the most um, helpful for a lot of folks, and I think it's from a women's perspective. So, uh, and that is, um, oftentimes you go to the traditionalist sort of communities and there, there almost seems like this puritanical uh kind of environment where it's almost like this idea of modesty means that you have to wear 
you know, 18th century clothing or whatever it is. And, and maybe it's an issue of uh, finances and, and affordability and whatever, but you don't have to um, break the bank to, to dress in a modern way and, and still be modest, right? And so that's the point made by, by Stephanie Gordon, uh, not to be... Um, not to be frumpy. She says something somewhere around here. Traditional women do not have to be frumpy to be traditional. You don't have to wear... I don't know what gunny sacks are. You can still be beautiful and be traditional, right? So uh, the main point was to say, you know, be in the world, right? So it's it, the, the saying in the, in the scriptures is, you're in the world, but don't be of the world, right? So we need to be red-blooded and passionate. We need red-blooded and passionate men and women in traditionalism. We need men that make time for boxing, wrestling, and weightlifting, and women who care about how they look and express themselves. We need to be in the world, not of the world. And I feel like traditionalists often find themselves in neither camp. Many Novus Ordo Catholics are in the world and of the world, and traditionalists need to make sure they don't jump onto the other extreme of not being in the world or of the world, right? So you have to avoid being of the world, meaning um, the, the values and, and, you know, the focus of your life is, is worldly things. But also there's this retreat from the world. And, and Protestants do this all the time where you have a sort of this parallel culture, right? You know, the, you have the people that still want to listen to rap. They want to listen to rock and whatever. And so you just create this Christian rack or rock yeah yeah rack racket you, you create this christian rock and christian rap and it's 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 for my opinion it's cringe okay let's let's be honest right i maybe some people like that stuff but it's just it just seems so cringe to me you have some catholic priests who do this father stan fortuna uh, 10 years ago i don't know where he's at these days but I'd, I'd listen to that rap and i just i don't understand why young people like that stuff rapping about jesus <laughs> it just seems so silly um you know keep rap where rap is if you want to listen to rap go listen to rap but to to, to christianize uh the stuff i don't know whatever maybe that's just my own opinion but yeah and i'm sure people would just say it's my own opinion but it just seems to me it's silly like you know keep things in their proper place give god pride of place worship you know uh, as as is his due um right and and do that properly and then every once in a while you listen to your rap music i mean as long as it's not like blatantly immoral or whatever it is um i don't really see any problem with that but all right that's that's all i gotta say um i mean there's 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 like eight chapters here of, of young people talking about how they became traditionalists and i thought i think it's a cool book so far the three chapters i read so till next time bye